Over the past few weeks, I've been telling the story of the first Greeks to plant new roots in the fertile pastures of southern Italy and Sicily. In the 8th century BCE, peoples from the Hellenic city-states of Chalcis, Eritrea, Corinth, Achaea, Megara, and more left the lands of their ancestors not just for trade, but for a chance at new life, new prosperity, new power. And by the turn of the 7th century, these efforts had ramped up. The cities in Italy were growing in size and wealth, and were transforming from colonies to city-states, poles in their own right. That's what this last video in the mini-series is all about. A look at how what began as a series of seafaring ventures evolved from Parva Grecia to Magna Grecia, Little Greece to Greater Greece, a cultural Hellenic hegemony that existed in Italy before and throughout the Roman Empire. We're now at the time when these powerhouses had their own armies, their own colonies, their own soft power, hard power, tyrants and ambitions. No longer are we speaking of Corinthian Syracuse or Chalcidian Region, but Syracusan Syracuse, Region Region. It's time to see, even if just a snapshot, of what some of these great cities got up to in the following centuries, and how they left their indelible mark on the heart of Rome. Magna Graecia grew out of fractured origins. We know how many city-states founded colonies, and this was by no means a collective effort. They weren't always friends, and were quite often enemies, particularly the Dorian and Ionian Greeks. They were also surrounded by hostile non-Greeks. One place to start is with the Phoenicians. At first, they lived out a peaceful coexistence with the Hellenic settlers, but as one city in modern Tunisia grew, so did its military confidence. This led to the meeting on Sicily in a huge conflict between Malchus of Carthage and the Greek cities in around 540 BCE. In turn, his successor and rival Mago I saw an opportunity to turn Carthage into the de facto capital of Phoenician colonies. This, in turn, led to the evolution of this group of Phoenicians into the Carthaginians, who, much more warlike than before, sent forth their naval power across the Mediterranean to suppress the more aggressive Greeks moving across Europe. On top of this, the Greeks were infighting amongst themselves. A few decades later, the Achaean-founded cities of Sybaris and Croton went to war, and here's where we introduce an interesting character. The Sybarites ready to march on their enemy, and Tyste Crotonietas Perideas Genomenus de Tenae Dorieos, Spisi Tumeresae, Caetuc Hende Tentas, and the timid Crotonites called upon Dorieos to aid them. I've mentioned this Dorieos before in my video on the early life of Leonidas of Sparta. He was the legendary king's older brother who had been trying to colonize Libya but had been beaten back by allies of the Carthaginians. He won the battle for Croton, who took Sybaris by force, and flushed with victory, his spirit restored, he went on to found a colony at Eryx in northwest Sicily. Unfortunately, he yet again was defeated in 510 BCE by a coalition led by Carthage, and this time was slain, leading to the kingship of Sparta going to Leonidas. His surviving allies were desperate to beat back the Carthaginians, but try as they might, they could not, and their pleas to the Hellenic homeland for aid were ignored. This drove a wedge between the Greeks in Italy and the Greeks in Greece, and played a key role in the accelerated independence of the Italian city-states. Their political sentiments changing, it led to a key moment instigated in the Rhodian and Cretan-founded city of Gela. The oligarchy that ruled there was overthrown by the Dorian leader Cleander, Cleandros, and a tyranny was established, which passed on to his brother Hippocrates, and in turn, to his nephew and commander Gellon, a very important name in Magna Graecia's history. So now we get to the city which was to become the greatest of all cities in Magna Graecia, Syracuse. Founded by the Corinthians in 733 BCE by Archias of the Heraclidae, it was without doubt a gem in the crown of Magna Graecia. 
I mean, it was always a major player in Greek Sicily, but its power really starts to ramp up in the wake of the Sicilian Wars. You see, Gelon, on his ascension to power, now ruled a territory which encompassed Naxos, Zankli, and more thanks to Cleander and Hippocrates' military efforts. But Gelon wasn't satisfied. He wanted to push Dorian power further across Sicily against the Ionians and Sicels. In 485 BCE, again capitalising on the changing political mindset of Italian Greeks, he was called by a rebel faction to Syracuse and captured the city with ease. Syracusion erde kai u geloion an greffen hafton emmelen. Thereon he publicly declared himself as of Syracuse, not of Gela. So we have the origin story of Gelon of Syracuse. Through his tyrannical reign and tactics of forced settlement and slavery, he ensured a Dorian hegemony across eastern Sicily with Syracuse as its capital, far advanced in science and warfare. He even spurned aid to Athens against Persia and Xerxes because they denied him the command of the defence, further showing the distance between Mania Graecia and the mainland Greece. He in fact used his power to fight back against the Carthaginians and won a pivotal victory at the Battle of Himera in 480 BCE against Mago's son Hamilcar. Gelon's rule over Syracuse cemented its enduring legacy. It would become a cultural hotspot for generations, and his augmentation of its natural fortifications with manufactured ones made it a valuable military spot. His brother and eventual successor Hiero, who was actually the beneficiary of Pindar's first Olympian ode and other Pythian odes, continued its development, and assured it would last to become a major city for the Roman and Byzantine empires too. Next up we shift our focus onto Region after these events, and going a bit more into his legacy is something I promised to James Zizakov, one of my esteemed patrons. Region, otherwise known as Reggio Calabria, was founded in around 720 BCE by the Chalcidians on the eastern side of the Strait of Messina. It was positioned as a crucial hub between the Italian mainland and Sicily. The chapter in Region's history I want to discuss today begins in 494 BCE under the leadership of Anaxilas. He was originally born in Messenia, but coming to Region rose to prominence and ultimately became its leader, known at the time as a tyrant. Following conflict with Persians back in Greece, a large group of refugees from the island of Samos, the birthplace of Pythagoras, and other Ionians came looking for asylum in Italy. Passing by Region, Anaxilas, himself an Ionian worried about Dorian power and Gelon, convinced them to continue over the straits to Sicily, where they should conquer the weak colony of Zankli, another I've mentioned before. They were successful in conquering Zankli, but Anaxilas Regino nu polo hysteronic balon, kaiten polin autos xumecton anthropon, oi kisas mesenen, apotes aeotu to archaion patritos antonomasen. Soon afterwards, they too were thrown out by Anaxilas of Region, who, after recolonizing the city with a multicultural population, changed its name to Messina after his old homeland. This is how Region under Anaxilas came to control the gateway between Italy and Sicily by ruling both Region and Messina, previously known as Zankli. He ruled for 18 years, though his children lost control of both cities just 15 after that. The following centuries were tumultuous and Region was involved in many wars. But things had settled by the time of Roman power, and under the Latin name Regio, it was a highly influential, wealthy, and multicultural province for centuries more. It kept its Greek culture for much of this time, and exerted its legacy right through the Middle Ages. Now, there is so much more history of Magna Graecia to delve into, and I'd love to, but it'd be the work of hours, and sadly, as much as I'd love to cover more, I am going to wrap it up here. Centuries of fighting between Greeks and Carthaginians, Greeks and Sikels, Greeks and Etruscans, Greeks and Greeks continued, but despite this bickering and battling, Greek culture endured. Rome, when it eventually subsumed these cities, continued to name them collectively Mania Graecia from the Greek Megalai Elas, and they surely contributed majorly to the prominence of Greek culture in Roman aristocracy. Greek was the language of the elite, Roman art mimicked Greek art, and in so many ways Greekness was critical to Romanness in Latin Romanitas. We have Mania Graecia to thank for that. If you'd like to support some more, then my Patreon page is, as always, linked in the description if you'd like to consider a small donation. 
It grants you early access to videos, work in progress, glimpses of what's happening next on the channel, and other regular classically themed posts. You can also suggest ideas, offer details, speak to me directly, but if you're watching the video, like what you see, then I'm happy, and hope you enjoy the next one.